How are you, Gabe? I'm doing great, Rich. How are you? I'm great. How do, what, what do you make of this report today, Gabe? Well, this was in some ways a long time coming. I, I think a lot of the allegations in this report, a lot of the allegations in the criminal investigation are not a big surprise to people who know anything about college athletics, particularly college basketball. I think the fact that there are some high-profile schools maybe took some people by surprise, but if you were told that agents and financial advisors were funneling money to college athletes under the table, is anyone really surprised by that? I think the big surprise is that this has turned into a criminal investigation and that people might actually be facing prison time, jail time for this. Again, I don't think the the underlying violations are really the big surprise. Maybe the scope of this is and maybe the timing of this is. Um, and then it's going to be interesting to see what these schools and what the NCAA does now with that information, particularly as the basketball tournament is obviously right around the corner. Okay, a couple questions for you in terms of right around the corner. Um, you know, the NCAA president, Mark Emmert's statement today it was essentially like, we are upset and we are going to sit down and talk about it and figure this thing out. Okay, <laughs> that essentially was his statement. So is it possible that schools, seeing that what was reported today, uh, are talking right now to coaches and compliance officers and saying we've got to sit kids down just in case to avoid any issues of, of, uh, of vacated wins going into a tournament? Is it possible we're going to see that over the next several weeks, Gabe? I think we've already we're, it's already happening. I think as this stuff started to, to leak out, anyone who had any connection to – any of these agents or, or any of the executives at Adidas were taking a long, hard look at what had gone on in their institution. And whether they knew about it at the time or not, um, virtually every compliance office in this country, I have to imagine, was doing these types of investigations. Now there are certainly brighter red flags that particular schools have been named. But yes, certainly the big issue is if your player is ineligible, if you have a current player who is ineligible because they received an improper benefit and they play during the tournament, um, that, that any potential wins could be vacated. Yeah. I mean, there are all these compliance officers certainly taking a very long, hard look, talking to their coaches, figure out what do we need to do? How quickly do we need to do it? And what evidence can we gather? Um, and it's really hard when you have schools all across the country and look at this and say, well, I don't want to be first. I don't want to be the first one to declare my player ineligible. And so it's dangerous to have a coordinated effort, but but I think there has to be some discussion, whether it's at the conference level or at some other level, to see what are the expectations on the schools now, um, given that the tournament is right around the corner, and is the expectation that these players, uh, that these schools, as they're otherwise normally required to do, will self-report and will sit down players if they believe there's evidence that they received improper benefits. Well, I mean, because there are some current players that are being named in this thing right now. Current players, current programs that we're expecting to see in Sweet 16s, Gabe. I mean, There's so. A, yeah. So I mean, what your, happens? Your beloved Michigan is not there, but Michigan State <laughs> is on the list. Kentucky's on the list. Duke is on the list. Well, certain. I mean, I mean but th that's from some of them are from past players. But I mean, when when Miles Bridges again of Michigan State is is his mom, according to expense reports, received hundreds of dollars in advances right now. Is it entirely possible that Michigan State sits there and goes, Bridges, you've got to sit right now, like right now, starting immediately? In theory, what should happen is the school would do an investigation now that they have this information. If they get enough evidence that he did, in fact, get that money, then yes. I mean, they, they, what they would do is they would talk to the NCAA and say, what should we do in this situation with this information? Hmm. Um and I, again, I, given that this is multiple schools with players, current players, and as you said, these are they're high-profile schools with some expectations they'll advance far in the tournament. Um, I don't know that this is a situation where they want the schools to have to make these decisions on their own, um, that they're going to have to receive guidance from the NCAA. And as you mentioned, Mark Emmert saying, look, this is horrible. Let's sit down and look at it and talk about it and then maybe act in a few years. That doesn't help now. These schools need to know what they are supposed to be doing right now. What should these compliance officers be doing right now so that they don't unfairly put at risk the rest of the team, the players who did nothing wrong. Um, but also you have to be fair to the school and to these players to say, look, just because we have some ledger from one agent doesn't mean that they are necessarily responsible for that misconduct. It so doesn't mean that it's necessarily 
NCAA, NCAA violation. Uh, direct- um, so, uh, again, I think they want to, want to take their time, make sure they get it right, sure. but also don't put their school at risk. Director of Tulane Sports Laws, uh, Gabe Feldman, here uh, on, on the Rich Eisen Show. Last one for you, Gabe. Uh, being a veteran of these things as you are, what do you make of the fact that uh, these documents were made available to two reporters of Yahoo right in the middle of this whole thing three weeks before the tournament? What, 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 how, why? And how, not, not just how. I mean, just why? Why do you think something like that happened? The why is a, is a great question, and, and let me just back up and ask the bigger why. You have to ask why is the government even doing this investigation? Why do they believe this rises to the level of a criminal offense? Why is this something we are spending ta- taxpayer dollars on and focusing on? Yes, it may be NCAA, NCAA violations at the end of the day, but, but why is this something that people may go to jail for? And then on top of that, why is this information being leaked at this time? I, I think there's a lot of strange things going on here i don't think there are any clear answers to it yet well what's your um, best guess is, what would be your best guess on that on the broader question i mean there's a lot of potential explanations it could be that they just want to make a splash okay um, and, and then on the fact that to... and then the fact that this was leaked now does it mean that their case might not be strong enough or or they just wanted to somebody wanted to shake things up i mean what would be your best guess on that Gabe? I, this could be rattling the tree this could be shaking the tree see what else is going to fall out to start to put pressure on the people who are named here um and as you know in a lot of these cases the people who are named are not necessarily the target they are used as a means to get to the bigger fish and to try to get them to turn and say look we've got you here if you don't cooperate we're going to come down hard on you um so rather than ha- have that happen Give us more information. Um, and it could be just a, a public ploy to try to get some leverage in the, in the investigation. And maybe the investigation hasn't turned up as much as they had wanted to. Maybe it's stalled a little bit. It's, it's unclear. There are lots of different explanations. It, it would just be a wild guess as to why this leaked sure. now and, and the information in particular that leaked now. Gabe, always appreciate the time. Thanks for hopping on the phone. My pleasure, guys. You got it. That's Gabe Feldman, director of Tulane Sports Law. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.